April, 16-year-old Kyle Plush died in a tragic accident in his Ohio school parking lot. Do you remember this case? Kyle got trapped under a third row seat in his family's minivan. And despite making two calls to 911, first responders never found him. They also came under fire for what some said was a bungled effort to do so. Now as parents are campaigning to improve our nation's emergency response systems, they are here and will join us momentarily for their first live interview. But first, Kyle's story. Kyle, if you met Kyle, he was just an unforgettable kid. It's been four months since Jill and Ron Plush lost their 16-year-old son, Kyle. He died trapped in a car after calling 911. The Seven Hills what parking lot? He called the one entity that he knew would be able to help him. Kyle was pinned by the third row seat of his minivan while reaching for tennis gear, using Siri to call 911 twice. But failures in the system that day meant Cincinnati dispatchers had trouble hearing him, and patrol officers couldn't find him. Unable to breathe, he died waiting. I probably don't have much time left to tell my mom that I love her if I die. Jill, you still haven't listened to the 911 call Kyle made? No. Kyle and I were very close. Uh, we went through a lot together, and um, it's really hard to um, it's hard to go on every day without him. Jill and Ron are now turning their anguish into action, starting the Kyle Plush Answer the Call Foundation, advocating for upgrades to 911 systems across the country. The 911 system is about 50 years old. New technology, better training, and something called Smart 911. Anyone can sign up online for free and provide information to help dispatchers like medical conditions, car make and model, and emergency contacts. Kyle's death has pushed Cincinnati to upgrade its system. I think, you know, he's looking down on us, and I think he's very proud of what, what we are doing. Making sure help will find others in time. That was NBC's Blake McCoy reporting. Please help me welcome Kyle's parents, Ron and Jill Plush. Thank you so much for being here. I know this has to feel very hard, but please know you have the love and support of everybody in this room and everybody watching this program right now. Can we start, can you tell us a little bit about Kyle, Jill? Um, Kyle was an amazing son. Um, he just, people that met him did not forget him. He just, he had this positive energy that he just lit up a room when he came into it. He was bright and curious and always busy doing something. Um, he always had a smile on his face. He always uh, was just, just lived every day to the fullest. I read that he was a Boy Scout, that he volunteered helping the elderly, helping at a food kitchen, um, helping young kids learn to read. I mean, he was an extraordinary 16-year-old. He, he was, yeah. I mean, um, in fact, the day um, that this tragic accident happened, I had sent him a text that morning because my teacher that I work with, she told me that at the PTA meeting that night, um, the night before that one of the parents was sharing at the PTA meeting about this kid who was at the, the fashion carnival, which is um, a German carnival, what did just such an amazing job selling these mystery bags because he was out there and he was going, you know, uh, everybody's a winner, come, you know, you know, it's only five dollars and everybody's a winner and he ended up selling all of these mystery bags. Mm -hmm. So I had sent him a text and I said, Kyle, I just want to let you know, you know, that you got a shout out at the PTA meeting. Everybody's so proud of how you um, were volunteering and selling these mystery bags. Mm -hmm. the, this, this happened recently. This is only April, uh, that this, uh, April 10th of 2018 that you lost him. Um, you knew that day he was supposed to go to tennis practice after school, and you, you knew something was wrong, right? That you hadn't you hadn't heard from him. Is that right? Well, uh, we didn't really know something was wrong right away. He was at tennis practice, and um, 
I have a Life360 app on my phone. So I checked it, and he was at school, and I just thought he was at tennis practice, which was, or actually, it was a tennis match at the school. And so I just kept checking it. I did try texting him, and he didn't text back, and I just assumed that his phone was in his backpack. Mm -hmm. um, and then later, when it um, started getting later, I, I contacted um, one of my friends who works at the school, and his son is Kyle's best friend. Um, who didn't go to school that day, and he was sick. And he said, yeah, you know, tennis matches usually do go later because they, you know, after they're done, they watch everybody else. So I just assumed that's why, where he was. Right. And I was making brownies um, for his tennis lunch the next day. They would, of course, find out uh, that their son was not safe and was not well and had reached out for help. And we'll talk about that and, and Ron finding him after the break, and most importantly, how they're now using this tragedy to help others, which they say is exactly what Kyle would have wanted. Don't go away. We're back now with Ron and Jill Plush, who tragically lost their 16-year-old son, Kyle, earlier this year. He died after becoming pinned under a seat in the family's van. Ron, I know you, you were the one who went to the school parking lot and actually found Kyle. Can you help us understand how it happened? Because I think a lot of parents out there will we'll worry about the minivan situation. I mean, what, what happened? Well, one of the, uh, I had found him that, um, that night when I went to the school. Um, he was unresponsive when I found him. Um, they are going through multiple investigations right now in the city um, through uh, investigation of the police department, the emergency communication center, and then the Hamilton County prosecuting attorney is doing an investigation. So we really, we really don't know yet um, the results. We will not know that until uh, late September. Well, what do you believe happened? I mean, is the, at the third row seat, he was reaching, reaching over it. Yes. To grab a tennis racket or tennis gear, mm -hmm. and it and it flipped. It flipped forward. Flipped that forward. was our understanding. Yes, it, it flipped back. And he was pinned. Yes. The, um... He was pinned in such a way that his, uh, I believe, his arms were pinned. Yes. So, you know, he, he, amazingly enough, under, in that situation, he was able to think of a way to use his phone um, that was in his pocket. Um, he utilized Siri to call 911. Even though he couldn't use his arms, he found a way to ask for help, which was... I mean, a true testament to his courage and smarts and quick thinking. And just uh, the creativity. You right. Know. I, I, don't, I don't think most people would think to, to, to tell Siri to call 911. Especially in a life-threatening situation when people are not thinking their clearest. Right. He was able to do that. And not only do it once, but twice. Twice. Uh, and he may have tried multiple times. The incredible piece of this is that notwithstanding his efforts, help did not come. The police, they came the first time, but they didn't get out of their cars. Um, and then they came, they, he called again, and he gave more identifying markers of, of the van, and that information was not relayed by the second 911 operator to the first responders. And they did not find him, even though he provided them with an opportunity to do so. Um, and that leads you to your current mission. Yes. Can you tell us about what, what do you want to change? Um, we want to make positive change. We want to change, want to uplift communities, and we want to change the 9-1 system across the United States. Because um, after this happened, we've talked to different people. I was led to this NINA conference, which is a National Emergency Number Association conference which has a lot of um, very dedicated professionals that dedicate their lives to 911, improving 911. And we, um, we just learned that there are a patchwork of different 911 systems across the United States. Um, and, and it's been around for 50 years, and yet we haven't really revamped it to make it uniform and to, and to sort of comply with modern technology, Ron, where you're talking about something called smart 911 that could change the way it works. Right. And I think, you know, what you said about the fact of the 50 years, I think is very important. Um, when you look at the time that the 911 system came about, we were all using rotary dial phones. 
And you look in today's day and age, and most people have cell phones and have eliminated landlines. And the statistics are that about 80% of the calls that come into 911 centers are through cell phones. Yet the infrastructure in those 911 centers is really geared towards old technology. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of opportunity for improvement. And one of the things we want to push for is really the three areas, the people, the process, and the technology. Right. Understand who, who the operators are and how we can better support them and understand how we can get more data to these operators. And maybe pre-register pre with, your, with your vehicle make and, and model, with your personal data, uh, so that if your cell phone calls in, they, they know. They can pinpoint you. I, I have to say, I was stunned to read that two months before he died, Kyle had pitched in, with, in his friends in this competition on tech the idea of revamping a system that would allow an Apple Watch to do exactly that kind of thing. I mean, it's almost like he had this purpose. How are you guys doing? I mean, um, every day is hard, you know. It's uh, left a, a big hole in our heart, but we have a lot of people surrounding us and um, helping us through this. Um, it does help um, to work on this foundation in Kyle's name as his legacy to change the 911 system, kyleplushanswerthecall.org. And we're hoping um, that a lot of people visit it, get more information, learn more about it, and kind of join us on this mission to change 911. He has already saved lives and, and will save more, but at such a price. I'm so sorry for your family's loss. Thank you. I know you have a beautiful daughter here. Thank you for being here too, hon. Um, I do want to tell the audience, we, we reached out, we have a statement from the Cincinnati Police Department. They say that they've worked closely with the Plush family to roll out Smart 911 to gain more detailed information from 911 callers in the event of an emergency. And we reached out to Honda as well. They say our hearts continue to be with the victim's family during this difficult time. While Honda has requested permission to inspect the vehicle, permission to do so has not yet been granted. And therefore, Honda does not have any specific information from which definitively to definitively determine what occurred in this incident. We'll probably learn more, as Ron points out, once we learn uh, the results of these ongoing investigations. All the best to you. Thank you for being here. We'll be right back. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.